Now let's say after me. It is not possible to carry out the Great Commission or to be a witness without the Holy Spirit. Now let's go to Acts chapter 1 and verse 6. Now let's read together, everybody. Let's go. Yes. They ask him, Lord, will you at this time restore? Can you imagine such a question? These guys have walked with Jesus for three years. Jesus is preparing to depart. Okay? He has been talking about the kingdom. He has been talking about the words I speak, their spirit and their life. Now, they are coming to him and they are saying, are you going to restore the kingdom? In other words, they are saying, whatever you have been saying for three years, we have understood nothing. We have understood nothing. Because in the mind, they are still in the Jewish traditions of an established kingdom like the one of David. They are waiting for a physical kingdom with a king. The man is talking, but they are stuck in religion. The words I speak, their spirit and life, they are waiting for a king like David. I am the Messiah, they are waiting for a king. I am the way. They are waiting for an army. He said, now you are leaving. But before you leave, where is the army? It is clear that till now, the disciples cannot understand the message, the messiahship, and the kingdom. In Luke 24 and verse 21, after his death, they even said, we had hoped that he was the one. We had hoped he is the one. We trusted that it had been he which should have redeemed Israel. You see, even after he has died and resurrected, they still had no revelation that this was the Messiah. We had hoped. Someone say, Messiahship, the message, and the kingdom. Say it again. Yes. Yes. Say it louder. Yes. Yes, they recognized he was a prophet. That they could embrace. In Luke 24 and verse 19, they said the words he spoke, they were powerful in word and in deed. As a prophet, they recognized. Because to recognize a prophet, you don't need revelation. You just need to see the miracles. Jesus, in Matthew 16, verse 13, he asks the disciples, whom do the people say I am? I've been with you. I've worked with you. What are the people saying? Who am I? What are they saying? Some say you are Elijah. That they can handle. Some say you are one of the prophets. That they can accept. But Peter says you are the Christ. The son of the living God. And he says shut up Peter. He said Peter don't tell anybody. It is not yet your time to witness. He 
He says, I know Peter, you have got the revelation, but you don't yet have the ability to demonstrate the revelation. He says, shh, Peter, wait. Say this to no man. Say this to no man. Keep quiet. In Matthew 17, he takes Peter, James, and John on the mountain of transfiguration. (laughs) What happened? Moses and Elijah appears. (laughs) Moses represents the law. Elijah represents the prophets. Jesus represents the gospel. Now you have the gospel, you have the prophets, and you have the law. Now this is why Peter is not ready. The moment Peter saw Elijah, he said, let's make three tents. One for Elijah, he even forgot about Jesus. He said, one for Moses. Oh, Jesus, also for you here. Immediately he did that. A voice came from heaven. This is my son. How come you make him number three? This is my son. How can you make number one to be number three? This is my son. And all of a sudden, Elijah and Moses disappear. And only Jesus is there. And he says, Peter, problem that revelation before the time will bring error and religion and monuments 